From the north side of the San Francisco Bay to Singapore, welcome to Urban X Real Talk Fitness Radio with your host, business owner, lecturer, author, master trainer, Tiaja, with over 30 years of experience in the health and fitness industry. He will challenge the fitness between your ears. So prepare your mind, body, and soul for the revolution of self-care, the evolution of fit, with real talk about real people, real health, real fitness, and the real deal behind our present illness culture. Real talk every time, all the time. Get weekly insights on how to shift your thinking, emoting, eating, training, hydrating, goal setting, and resting for you, the everyday athlete. You can cheat your fitness, but you can't steal your health flow. It's Tuesday, 9 a.m. Let's flow. Welcome to Urban X Real Talk Fitness Radio, where we challenge the fitness between yours and your host, Tiaja. Why do we age? Is it because our cells possess some internal clock so when the sand runs out of the hourglass per se we die? Or is it, as some theories suggest, our parts merely wear down and wear out by some of the same processes that cause a metal to rust or an apple sitting on a countertop to rot? If you believe this, and millions do, then you subscribe to what is known as the free radical theory. In 1954, Denham Herman was asking similar questions and it was he who came up with the free radical theory of aging. Now consider the science. Over time, free radicals proliferate and do increasing damage. These toxic products were also responsible for premature aging. So what exactly are free radicals? Well, free radicals are atoms that have, in the course of chemical reactions within the cells, lose electrons and become highly unstable. These delinquent atoms then careen around inside the cells until they are able to restore their electromagnetic balance by ripping electrons from other atoms, often starting a chain reaction. Free radicals burn like gunpowder until hundreds of thousands of atoms are damaged. They play havoc with the membranes and contents of cells, and because their unbalanced electrical charge, they're also drawn like magnets to DNA, where they stick to the ribbon of genetic material and cause random mutations. This effect on DNA is a double-edged sword. It disrupts the activity of genes and can cause cancer and other diseases. Free radicals assist in the crosstalk between cells. They can, under certain circumstances, prime cells to be less vulnerable to stress, and they might even have a role in fighting bacteria and viruses. Sounds plausible, doesn't it? But this, like so many other scientific explanations, particularly regarding aging, are no more than theories. There has been no long-term epidemiological studies conducted to prove the efficacy of such claims, yet they continue to dominate the thinking of millions regarding aging. How many times have you gone into a health food store and seen ads, entire aisles? There are three major components to their proposed defense system, so today we'll examine all three. There is the vitamin antioxidant defense system, the enzyme antioxidant system, and of course, the mineral defense system. But were these systems created by the food and supplement industries just to bolster cells, or is there some real science to antioxidants? And will taking antioxidants slow down or reverse the aging process? Allow me to introduce Dr. Randolph Knowles, who I believe offers a fresh perspective on this age-old debate, no pun intended. Today will be just another day unless you decide it won't be. It is Tuesday, July 16, 2019. Let's flow. Uh, do you believe that, from what you've heard, that vitamins are safe? You believe they're safe? <laughs> and uh, do you believe that vitamins can cause you harm? How many think vitamins can cause you harm? Okay. Now, now, hypervitaminosis, probably most of you have heard of that, you know, where you're getting too many, as Dolores says, whether it's, whether it's A, C, or E, and that's certainly a condition that can be very, very serious. But we're, talking, we're going to talk today about primarily the amounts that you get from routine taking of vitamins, that you, like you would go over to Walmarts and buy you a bottle off, and here's the, the recommended dosage. Now, have you heard of antioxidants in the news? Any? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. And do you believe that these antioxidants that you've heard about on the news are good for you? Okay. Have you heard of free radicals? Mm -hmm. Okay. Everybody has. I see some of my wife, some of Robin's um, ladies' magazines there, and boy, the free radicals. These antioxidants, they assure you that you're not going to have wrinkles, you're going to be, be beautiful and live a healthy life forever. That may not be the case. 
And of these free radicals that you've heard about, in that context that you've heard of them, do you think that these free radicals are harmful or can hurt you? All right. Robin, would you pass out those little handouts we brought? You might have to share. We didn't know how many would be here, so we made 20 copies. But um, Okay, but I, we can share with neighbors, too, here and just see, because we're going to go over some of these facts here. There was a time when I felt, too, that, you know, these, particularly we're going to talk about the vitamins A, C, and E today. And when I thought these things were the greatest things around, and I'd have a little meal of vitamins every day to go along with my regular meal, until I really started getting into the subject of oxygen metabolism, what it does in our the impact of an antioxidant on us. Basically, we have one mechanism that helps keep us in a state of health, and that is this chemical process called oxidation. If we get an infection with a bacterium, our white blood cells go catch that little bacteria, it brings it inside itself, and then it kills the bacterium. How does it kill it? It doesn't have a little pistol or 38 revolver in there to shoot it with. It kills it oxidatively. Now these things work all the time, 24 hours a day, every day. And this is very important. We have 10 times the number of microbes in and on the body than we have cells within the body. So why aren't we constantly infected? We're not. Because our body holds them in abeyance. And the best way to look at this is the system that we utilize to clot the blood and to break down or to prevent clotting. It's called a fibrinolytic system. If that system isn't working for us all the time, our body would, clot, would form clots in the veins. But it doesn't because that system there to break it down is working 24 hours a day, every day. As I started doing research in these areas, I was astounded that many systems have to work 24 hours a day, every day. They have to work constantly. For instance, to hold off infections from all of these bacteria that we have all over us. The same thing they do with viruses. This is the same way that we fight viral infections, oxidatively. It's also the same way that we fight new cancer cell formation. If new cancer cells start to grow, our bodies can detect them. And then they tell the cancer cell through chemical signals they tell the cancer cell to commit suicide. It's called apoptotic execution. Big long names, real complicated chemistry, but it suffice it to say that our body tells those little cancer cells to kill themselves. It does so oxidatively. The whole process of oxidation, which is changing some electrons around in certain compounds, is there to protect us. So a basic question then is, if oxidation is there to protect us 24 hours a day, why on God's green earth would I want to take an antioxidant? Something that should stop that. A theory came about in the early, in the mid-50s, really, in 54, 55, by a guy called Dr. Denham Harmon. Now, I know Dr. Harmon, have met him, have lectured at the same courses that he's been at. He came up with a theory then called the free radical theory, in which he hypothesize that oxygen-free radicals, as, they were metabol as oxygen was metabolized in the body, as we get older, these oxidative products build up in the body, and those oxidative products are the things that cause various diseases, including cancer, heart disease, atherosclerosis, diabetes. Now the list is over a hundred different diseases are attributed to these oxygen products in the body. Well, this was kind of easy to do. And oxygen, in my opinion, and the products of it, and some of those products are simple molecules, such as hydrogen peroxide, such as plain old bleach, hypochlorous acid. These are strong oxidizing agents, but they're in us all the time. These are some of the compounds that our body uses to kill these bacteria, to kill these viruses. Any virus, including the AIDS virus, that has a lipid, a fatty coat on it, these things will oxidize and kill. If we're in a laboratory and we spill, we think we have HIV blood and we spill it on a laboratory countertop, how do we clean that? We say, quick, get some bleach. We're going to oxidize it. Get some peroxide. We're going to oxidize it. 
Many municipalities in Europe clean their entire water system with hydrogen peroxide or with bleach. Most of our pools are cleaned with forms of chloride, bleach, calcium chloride, forming hypochlorous acid in the pool. If we want to clean all of the effluent from this city and pump it into the swamp down there, we clean it with oxidation ponds, oxidatively. The same way we kill and control bacteria outside the body is the same way chemically we do it inside the body. And not even doctors are aware of this. They haven't had a chance to study it. But this is the basis of this whole approach on vitamins. Now, I disagree with Dr. Harmon completely in his free radical theory. In fact, I believe oxygen is our greatest ally. It is so incredibly important that within even a matter of seconds of deprivation, being deprived of oxygen, brain cells will start to die. In a matter of seconds, let alone the whole body can have irreversible damage in minutes without oxygen. And although we don't realize it, it happens for us passively from the moment of our first breath or even being supplied through the mother's blood supply that oxygen's there. Without it, we cease to exist. So I usually tell those scientists or doctors in attendance that if they doubt the importance of oxygen, just hold your breath for five minutes and then we'll talk about it. I haven't had one take me up on that yet. Why? It's supposed to be so bad. It's supposed to be causing all these diseases. No, it isn't. In fact, it's the method that we use to keep these diseases away. If we look at the situation of cardiovascular disease, blockages in blood vessels, when these plaques start to build up, there's now experimental work that clearly shows we can take compounds that are photoactivated. They will be absorbed by that plaque if we shine the right kind of light, 630 nanometer light through a laser on it, you can dissolve that plaque. We can do the same thing with cancer cells. And you do not kill normal cells. It's selective. The body knows how to handle these oxygen products. It does so all the time. When we try to treat cancer now with chemotherapy, it's really choose your poison. Many of these are chemical cousins of mustard gas. That's where they came from. The Army realized this in the late 40s and such, that these mustard gas products, weapons of mass destruction, would kill rapidly growing cells. So what they did was, in the, unfortunately for the first gentleman they tried it on, he didn't make it. It was too strong. Today we use maximally tolerated dose. That's easy to figure out. Maximally tolerated dose. If you give any more, you kill the patient. But we now know, too, that from the combinations of chemotherapy and irradiation, that in the process of trying to kill the cancer cells, we have killed the patient. There's no selectivity to it. Many times, chemotherapy and irradiation are just about as bad as the disease itself. And unfortunately, we've all had family members likely who have had this. And we see the terrible times that they go through. We've got to have better answers. And I think that a lot of this research work that I'm doing now with this oxidative capacity of the body is going to lead to those better answers. Where we can selectively kill not only the cancer cell itself, but we can kill any metastatic lesions in the body if we raise the oxidative capacity of the body high enough. I will envision a time with heart disease where if we have a blockage, we can put a catheter in just proximal to that blockage, infuse these simple compounds such as hydrogen peroxide and bleach, hypochlorous acid, which together form a magical compound called excited singlet oxygen. It will dissolve the plaque in situ. You could remove the catheter, no stent, no surgery, and go on your way. That's what we're headed for. But it's extremely difficult to get there. I'm sounding like one voice crying in the distance now. <laughs> because everyone's been taught and has accepted that the free radicals are bad, the antioxidants are good.
Now here are my two cents and feel free to keep the change. Antioxidants donate electrons, which in theory stop free radicals by giving the wanton free radical the electron it needs to reestablish stability. But as Dr. Knowles has so astutely pointed out, none of these theories have been proven. When we wholly accept anything and everything the medical science community dispenses as fact, we essentially are giving over our power of autonomy, meaning the power of attorney to govern ourselves and our health. As I've said on many occasions, you should never allow your doctor to pretend that he or she knows more about your health than you do. Think about that. You have lived inside your body for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years or more, and some medical professional you just met who has to run a battery of tests and accrue your family's medical history should know more about you than you? How is that possible? I'll tell you how. An auto mechanic may know more about my car than I do, especially since I don't work on cars, but my physician will never know more about my health than I do. Sure, they may know more about a disease or illness than I do, but that doesn't make them omniscient when it comes time to decide the best medical approach to healing my body. I consult with my doctor. I do not seek out their opinion. We come to an agreement on what we think is the best approach for restoring my body back to optimum health. And here's some more food for thought. I wholly believe in vitamin and mineral supplementation, but not to prevent something bad from happening to me. I don't work out to prevent bad things either. Both supplementation and working out are no more than my way of playing offense so that my body can do what comes naturally and that is play defense. There is wear and tear in the body but there is also repair. Every day we tear down cells which the body graciously repairs. Look, we do serious damage, sometimes irreparable damage to the body when we tear down our cells more than we assist our bodies in the repair process. But this is no more than common sense. If you eat fast food for example, and I still do on occasion, but have been doing so every day for 20, 30, 40 years or more, then it is not free radicals that is aging you, it is your choices. Come to think of it, what we choose not to eat or supplement is just as injurious if not more than what we choose to eat. There are a lot of theories regarding aging, but the one most ignored is how our choices determine how we think about aging, but more importantly, how we age. Dear friends, I wish above all things that you prosper just as your soul prospers. You've been listening to Urban X Real Talk Fitness Radio with your host Tiaja. Until next week, as always, walk in health and peace.